let's continue with looking at meiosis and sexual life cycles. My name is Professor Hudson and where we left off in the previous segment was we were looking at an overview of meiosis. Some key things to note when looking at or considering the process of meiosis is that there are some similarities with mitosis but then there are some differences. One similarity with mitosis is that the cells that are going to do meiosis will go through an interphase of G1S and G2. They will reproduce their DNA to make duplicated chromosomes containing the sister chromatids. Then meiosis begins to differ from mitosis in that in meiosis there is two rounds of cell division. There are going to be two rounds of cell division. The first round of cell division is going to separate the homologs, but the chromatids will still be attached. And then the second round of cell division will then separate the chromatids so that you have four cells. The cells are haploid after meiosis 1 because we've cut the chromosome number in half. However, we still have to get rid of the chromatids, which is why we have to do a second round of cell division called meiosis 2. Meiosis 2 looks a lot like mitosis. As mentioned, meiosis is a form of cell division by which gametes, also known as sex cells, would have the number of chromosomes are produced for sexual reproduction. Meiosis occurs with sex cells, such as to produce egg and sperm. With meiosis, the chromosome number diploid is reduced to haploid. This is done by two divisions, a meiosis 1 and a meiosis 2. The first nuclear division in meiosis 1 separates the pairs of homologs with each daughter nucleus receiving one. This is showed here. Then the second nuclear division, meiosis 2, will separate the chromatids and parcel one chromatid into each of two more daughter cells. So in order to reduce the chromosome number to haploid and reduce the genetic material, with meiosis you must do two rounds of cell division. At the end of meiosis there are four haploid daughter nuclei, each with one copy of each homologous chromosome. Meiotic cell division normally produces four haploid cells from a single diploid parent cell. Now let us review. Daughter cells receive exactly half of the genetic information of their parent cells as a result of choose the correct answer. Please write down the letter that corresponds to the correct answer as you will enter it in the PowerPoint lecture quiz in Blackboard. While meiosis produces haploid cells, the diploid number for the organism is restored when the sperm and egg come together during fertilization. Now we will spend some time talking about fertilization and meiosis. So let's move to concept two. Fertilization and meiosis alternate in sexual life cycles. A life cycle is a generation to generation sequence of stages in the reproductive history of an organism. Meiosis in human males is part of a sperm production 
and meiosis in human females is part of egg production. When a haploid sperm fertilizes a haploid egg, the zygote is diploid. The zygote undergoes mitosis as it develops into a newborn child. Mitosis continues after birth until the individual reaches maturity, then the life cycle begins again. As mentioned previously, this is a karyotype. Karyotypes are pictures that show the entire set of chromosomes from a cell so they can be studied. Human somatic cells have 23 pairs of chromosomes. The karyotype is an ordered display of the pairs of chromosomes from a cell. One of the things you should note from this karyotype is that there are two chromosomes in each pair that are called homologous chromosomes or homologs. Chromosomes in a homologous pair are the same length and shape and carry the same types of genes. The sex chromosomes, which determine the sex of the individual, are called X and Y. Human females have a homologous pair of X, so they're XX. Human males have one X and one Y chromosome. Can you tell from looking at this karyotype what sex this person is. If you said male, you are correct. If you notice, there are a pair of chromosomes referred to as X and Y. The X and Y chromosomes are circled in this karyotype. Humans have 44 autosomes, which are the 22 pairs of chromosomes that encode for most of the body traits, and then two sex chromosomes, which determine whether a person is male or female. Each pair of homologous chromosomes includes one chromosome from each parent. If you look at the homologous pair highlighted here, you will notice that there are two chromosomes in this pair. The chromosome mark 1 could have been the one that came from dad and the chromosome marked 2 in red could have been the one from mom. A diploid cell as what is shown in this karyotype has two sets of chromosomes. For humans, the diploid is 46. Meiosis produces haploid cells that have only 23 or half of, of the 46 in each cell. When the sperm and egg get together, the diploid will be restored. Let's review. Question 2. A chimpanzee has 48 chromosomes in its somatic cells. How many of those chromosomes are autosomes? Choose the correct answer. This figure shows a diploid cell with replicated or duplicated chromosomes. During meiosis, the diploid cell in the ovary and the testicle will give rise to haploid cells referred to as sperm and eggs. Another name for the sperm and the egg is a gamete. In this figure, what do you think the diploid is? The diploid, also known as the 2N number, is 6. There are 6 chromosomes in this cell. How many chromatids are in this cell? Yes, there are 12 chromatids in this cell. There are three chromosomes in blue, which represent the half from dad, and three chromosomes in red, which represent the half from mom. During meiosis one, this number will go from six to three chromosomes. 
and then during meiosis 2 the remaining chromosomes will be separated so that there are no longer any chromatids as we mentioned a gamete which can be a sperm or an egg contains a single set of chromosomes and is haploid for humans the haploid number is 23 sometimes written as n equal 23 each set of 23 chromosomes consists of 22 autosomes and one sex chromosome in an unfertilized egg the sex chromosome will always be X in a sperm cell the sex chromosome may be their X or Y what this means is that the male determines the sex of the baby. If the male passes a X sperm into a X egg, it will be a girl. If the male passes a Y sperm into a X egg, it will be a boy. Gametes are the only haploid cells in animals. They are produced by meiosis and undergo no further cell division before fertilization. Gametes fuse to form a diploid zygote that divides by mitosis to develop into a multicellular organism. This slide shows a diploid precursor sperm cell called a spermatogonia, which is undergoing meiosis 1 to produce two haploid cells with chromatids still present. These two haploid cells will then enter meiosis 2 to become four haploid sperm with no chromatids. A similar process occurs in the ovary to create haploid eggs. Let us review. When a primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 1, 2, fill in the blank, secondary spermatocytes are produced. Choose the correct answer. This is question 3. Question 4. A primary spermatocyte with 46 chromosomes will undergo meiosis and yield. Choose the correct answer. One of the goals in sexual life cycle is to make more organisms. In most situations, the fusion of the sperm and the egg will form a zygote. A zygote is a fertilized egg. When the zygote is formed, the diploid is restored for most organisms. So if you have an egg that has the haploid 23 chromosomes, and it's fertilized by a sperm that has the haploid 23 chromosomes you end up with an organism known at this stage as a zygote that now has 46 chromosomes then this zygote can undergo mitosis to produce body cells that can develop into a baby a child and then an adult For humans, the haploid egg and sperm come together at fertilization to restore the diploid. Let us review. Question 5. The diploid number of chromosomes is restored after blank so that an animal's body cells contain the diploid number of chromosomes. Choose the correct answer. 